Well, all right. Well, this is uh, this is a prototype for the Planet Pointer for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory up in Pasadena, and we're using these lovely little LED modules. Um, and this is all sort of off-the-shelf stuff. So. Always. The part that uh, we're making is the uh, mechanical pan and tilt assembly, which is going to be responsible for tracking the celestial object in question. And so we found these beautiful little um, geared stepper motors uh, on the internet. And these are fantastic because they've got a ton of torque and you can control them with very simple microcontrollers. And so we literally can just issue uh, degree uh, of elevation and what, azimuth? Azimuth, yeah. Azimuth, and it will, uh, it will actually point to whatever star, depending on the time of the day it is, that uh, they have in question. And actually, they're going to use it to uh, track satellites and things like that, too. So they can move very slow or very quickly. Uh, and of course, to put all of this stuff together, though, because nobody's ever built a planet pointer before, um, we're <laughs> we, we need a milling machine. And everybody's like, oh, we use our milling machine to make brackets. Well, you put enough brackets together, and all of a sudden, you've got something really amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, no. Uh, no uh, uh, bad things to say about brackets. <laughs> right on. <laughs> it's all plates in a series of it's holes, all, right? All, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything is just plates in a series of holes, and before you know it, you've got a machine if you, if you plan it out right. <laughs> Very so right cool. now, a lot of stuff is just living virtually. It's all catted yeah, up, ready to go. We just haven't actually made the chips yet. Yeah, so uh, we actually took a, a trip up to the fantastic metal store today, it's just like kids and candy stores. It's just got gobs and gobs of aluminum, $200 worth of aluminum blocks and uh, it sounds like a lot it is <laughs> um, so we're gonna um, we're gonna hopefully uh, have a nice pan tilt assembly that we can put together and uh, get this thing uh, rocking and rolling uh, so JPL can have a look at it and uh, hopefully give us another deposit <laughs> right um, on. so very cool we're ready to rock and roll here throw some Tormach power at this job that's awesome what else do we have here in the shop? So we have uh, an ancient lathe. Um, it's a pre-World War II South Bend. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody's is a pre-World War II, you know? We mix yeah. a little bit of the old and the new. <laughs> you know, when you need things round, there's no other, no other thing to go no for better than thing. a lathe. Uh, we <laughs> got MIG and TIG and MIG and TIG um, welders, so we uh, can do lots of fancy uh, it's a welding. We have, uh, you know, drill presses and uh, a little tiny uh, toy mill. This was free, but it works. So every now and then we you just need the to just need to drill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> something, something to play around with there. Uh, you know, they can't accidentally crash it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, we have we have we have creative interns. We've got the corner uh, market corner on the creative interns here. Yeah, this shop has no fewer than four. Uh, Tormach rotary tables in it. So this one was, um, this, uh, Tormach was a little confused when we, um, when we ordered some of the things for a rotary table and not the other things, uh, not realizing that we had just purchased four tables for another job, uh, which was the, uh, the paintball gun kit. Mm. And, uh, and so, because we're clever, we were able to go in and look at the box and hook up all the uh, components to get it running again. So these are basically recycled rotary tables from okay. um, another project from another project that we had. Um, so this one, I'm just using it to hold brown stock because I'm lazy. Um, it's easier it's there, and it's very easy. You know? it's <laughs> Actually, there's one more thing. We should just go show them the uh, oh the, the pod. pod. The pod, yeah. You guys have the pod. The pod. <laughs> So this here is a, uh, uh, a motion platform that is stylized off of a, um, a was it a B-2 bomber gunner? I think it's like a B-52. No, not a B-52. B-2. You sit in this and you wear these goggles, you wear your VR goggles, and when you steer this thing to the left or the right, the whole thing actually physically moves. And so it, it moves side to side, it also tilts up and down, and, hmm. um, and when you pull the triggers, you're shooting in the game. So it's a very uh, immersive, this is, this is sort of immersive technology that uh, we love to produce. Sure. Um, you sit in this thing and you really feel like you're in flying this B-2 bomber. You're feeling the G-forces, you're feeling the, uh, you know, shaking of the gun and all of that sort of stuff. And so, 
Um, yeah, I think some of the motor mounts for turning this thing had to be made on the uh, on the Tormach, by the way. So we had, because they're, you know, getting this big cylinder to twist on this, you know, it's all sitting on one big bearing, to get it to twist evenly. And also, it spins 360. So you can just keep spinning this all the way around, and it will never get bound up. We so there's slip, true, rings. slip rings on it, so you can continuously spin forever. Yeah. Uh, so much of VR, like, up until this point, has just been kind of like, you know, Stand around in a room and like you know shoot the zombie or right. whatever. Like it's at, at best, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, if what we're trying to do here is to build something that like gives you an actual like true immersive experience rather than just standing there and just seeing something different, you right? Know, like you're actually feeling something different. So this has transducers built into it that like shake and vibrate and provide like these really super low frequency uh, vibrations. And of course, you have like the you know, spinning. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of what we're doing is trying to, like, add, you know, a, a fourth and fifth dimension to virtual reality. Yeah. One cool. of the big things about VR is that uh, it's also very hard to play back because uh, if someone's wearing VR goggles and the camera, for example, if you move the camera, that person immediate, that's watching will immediately just vomit because he didn't move, but his view just suddenly moved. Oh. So it's like the worst form of... Uh, motion sickness. Motion sickness, yeah. yeah. And so what we found is that the best way to do that is you move, you physically move the person as well. So if you're ever going to move the camera, which you do all the time, you just push them, just give them a bump. And, and it keeps their brain from uh, having to eject their stomach contents. <laughs> which, is, which is a good problem not to have. I mean, that's... Yeah. Thanks for watching. Check out our latest videos here, and for more metalworking tips, tricks, and stories, subscribe to our YouTube channel.